super competitive, <laughs> which I don't always like to admit. Uh, I was always somebody who was very active. I played two sports in college, softball and basketball. It was a great thing for me, and I loved being able to pass it on to both of my boys as well. Hi, my name is Linda Brassington, uh, and I was diagnosed with early stage breast cancer in 2009. I was 34 years old. I was living in Phoenixville, Pennsylvania with two small sons. My oldest son, Luke, was four at the time, and Cole is my youngest, he was two. Basically just taking on my role as a mom with my husband, Jonathan. For me, at the age of 34, I certainly didn't expect it at the time. You're not supposed to hit It's had the ultrasound. They put me in a room with an uh, Oprah magazine, a box of tissues, and a telephone. <laughs> Came in and asked me if I had a surgeon. <laughs> I said, uh, I'm only 34. I don't have a surgeon. I haven't lived long enough to need one. When I finished treatment, I think I made it my mission to be an even better mom. Uh, we don't know how much time we are going to have, so let me be the best mom and the best wife to Jonathan that I can be. Uh, my early stage diagnosis was 2009, and then in 2018, nine years later, is when I found out that my cancer had returned and it in fact had metastasized to my liver and my bones. Uh, to say that, you know, my initial diagnosis was a shock, this was an even greater shock. But the thing is, is I didn't even really understand what being metastatic meant other than I, I knew it meant it spread and it was no longer just contained in the breast. But I didn't know what it meant for me as far as what my future looked like, what treatment was gonna be like. Well, I'll go, I'll do whatever it takes, and then I'll move on again. <laughs> um, unfortunately, with metastatic breast cancer, that's not exactly the case. and. Treatment never stops. You can't just go cut it out and be done with it and move on. I've been fighting the battle with metastatic breast cancer now for four years. Um, in the course of those four years, I've been on six lines of treatment. Drugs can be hard on your body, uh, multiple trips to the ER, a couple hospitalizations along the way right around the time of my son's graduation. But fortunately, the day of his graduation, I was good. I was able to celebrate that moment and lots of other moments too. Unlike my early stage when I was diagnosed with metastatic breast cancer, I did seek out support. I dove heavily into living beyond breast cancer. I did a lot of research through their website. I heard about the Hear My Voice advocacy program through LBBC. I was trained and I learned about all the different forms of advocacy. Basically, as I've gone through this and learned how difficult it is to have metastatic breast cancer, I wanted to be able to help others. It was actually a great way to connect and feel supported by women who were also going through what I was going through, who really understood uh, all the intricacies of having uh, metastatic breast cancer. I've been extremely fortunate in uh, the fact that I have a great support system. Uh, my parents, Bob and Liz, my sister Sue, all my friends, I basically have an army of support. Anyway, she wants more pepperoni. So she's hearing the squirrels. And Luke and Cole and Jonathan are amazing, <laughs> pushing me through on the tough days. They always seem to know when I need a little pick-me-up. There are people out there working so hard, and uh, I applaud them, uh, from the organizations that support us, to the research, to the doctors. They want us to live. They want us to live longer. They want to find a cure. And um, I'm hopeful every day that I'll read the headline that says, there's been a cure found because that's what I need, that's what we all need.